Welcome to the Prophecy Club. I think I've got a little bit of good news for you. In a world like this, any kind of good news is we're all looking for it. So this is new, new information, and it's basically going to say that, yes, trouble is coming soon, but it's going to be short-lived. Now, let me give you my take on this. I think it's right. Uh, as a matter of fact, I didn't totally sense that it was time for any kind of a big skirmish to start with China. I don't think it's time for any big trouble to hit immediately. I think that we are about to see the Palestinian state, and the next really, really big trouble is probably going to come from an earthquake that is a result of us splitting Israel. And that's probably going to happen on or before June 13th of this year if Omer of the Omer ushers in Palestinian state is talking about the 49 days of the counting of Omer and if that happens this year. I personally suspect that it does, but of course I can't say it for sure. Now, what am I saying? I'm saying that probably March, April, May, May, <laughs> may be some brief trouble. But then hopefully towards the end of the year, according to what these guys are saying, which I'm about to read, and the Lord hadn't told me anything, okay? Just like he hadn't told me the thing about Taiwan, okay? That was just me interpreting what others had said. And that, by the way, was the correct interpretation. Now, if it didn't happen, again, that's not my problem. I'm the watchman. I'm to warn you. I did my job. I warned you. So uh, let me remind you, we're asking everybody to subscribe. And you do that by going to the bottom and you just click subscribe. And also, we ask you to join the Prophecy Club, which is a $9.90 a month uh, ongoing automatic payment. And you can do that by clicking the little QR code down at the bottom. And also, I'm going to recommend going to Joseph Kitchen. They are one of our sponsors, and I believe it is... I believe it's God's famine food. And if you haven't got any of it, I think that you you may have some long-term storage food, but I don't think it's God's perfect plan. I think they have God's perfect plan for long-term storage food. I'll perhaps come back to that later. But anyway, so this comes to us from Terry Bennett. Brand new information, 310-24, as in, well, I'm making this 4.22 p.m. on a Monday afternoon. So this was... A mm, little over 24 hours ago in his church. Someone sent it to me. By the way, thank you very much for sending me so many of your emails many times. You're the best researcher. You're the, you're the best folks out there to find information for me, of course, other than the Holy Spirit. I cannot tell you how many times I know that I got an email from the Holy Spirit. But anyway, so it's called A Look Down the Road for Our Nation, Terry Bennett. It's of importance, or I wouldn't be sharing it as far as I'm concerned. I believe it'll make sense in the next few months because I think we're looking at not years in the short-term look. I think we're looking at months for this to happen. And I think there's confirming evidence to that. I think what I'm about to read is right on, and I think, I think the Spirit will confirm it to you. He says, I think we're looking at months, so there's some importance, I believe, in the warning that I got from the Lord. There's a part of this that was literally like an interstate in front of me. Now, here's where the dream started. Don, Donna and I were traveling in some type of a vehicle down this interstate. We had come to a halt and then began to move very slowly forward because of these multi and large potholes that, in, that were in the road in front of us. And I think that's a perfect description of where America is right now, we're having to slow down. And I mean, like our, our supply chains aren't working right. Things go wrong in our cars. We can't get parts and things like that. So we're having to slow down. We're having to move very carefully through all the potholes. And there's about to be a lot more potholes. Let me say to you, what I'm about to describe is dealing with economics and government issues. And then the governmental issues would include resources, sorcery resources, finances, support, those types of things from states right down to the individuals. All of that makes perfect sense. So the road was filled with potholes for some hundreds of yards. It was not lengthy. 
So what I'm describing is a short, difficult time in our nation. Now, this is what makes me really think he's hearing, because I don't think the big one's here either. He says, it's not the big one. That has been before told by the Lord. This is the short term, but it's not far in front of us. Does that make sense? I think so, yes. So the roadway was filled with potholes due to the lack of them being addressed over the years. In other words, a lot of things gone wrong in our nation that haven't been fixed. Potholes representing different things, some of different depths. I know this is to go speeding through the area would be to blow out your tires and break your axles on the vehicle if you went fast. What was already slowed down was what became much slower of necessity. That's an economic term, as Shane Warren said, an economic storm. Does that make sense? Again, this is not the big one. It may feel that way during the things like this, but it's not going to be. That has not been prayed away yet, and this that I'm talking about now is coming. There is no stopping it. There was because of the potholes that were representing many things, including agendas, mismanagement, overspending, and the national debt out of control. All that sound familiar? I, I, think, I think the Lord spoke to him here. But all triggered by governmental overreach and every responsible and unlawful action in various leaders. Lies, oppression, criminal actions will be a portion of why this stretch of the road will be filled with potholes and the difficulties of the time. A slowdown is a must, and that will be in various types of applications. Navigating will be treacherous, but not impossible, especially, I'll say this, to God's people to trust Him to be lead, to be led and directed by Him. To be treacherous, but not impossible for the righteous. It'll be treacherous, but not impossible for the righteous and the wise. In other words, he's saying, yeah, okay, there's trouble coming. It's not the big one yet. It's not the Russians attacking. I hope it's not even the earthquake. But if we split Israel, God's going to split America. 12 to 14 prophecies say that. So there were some statements that were said to me by the Lord. He spoke. He said, fractured functions. The breaking of structure in the nation is like bones of support being broken. Boy, that makes sense, doesn't it? Secondly, the functional disabilities. The restriction of one's own movement within the nation as well as progress. Instead, limitations. Okay, we've had prophecies about curfews, national curfews, got to stay and you can't go out and things like that. We've already been through some of that and apparently there's more coming. Lastly, disabling functions, particularly important functions as well as unnecessary functions. So there's some things that our government does that holds us back and there's some things that it does that are really unnecessary. I never heard anybody talk like that, but that's exactly right. In fact, unnecessary Unimportant functions were leading to the disabling of important functions because they have robbed and drained the resources. Boy, that sounds exactly right, doesn't it? There will be no bailout this time. So there'll be a disabling of government functions, not all, but some, as well as disabling of certain businesses. Disabling supply and demand for short periods of time. In other words, you won't be able to get food. You won't be able to get water filters, parts for your car, repairs for your home. Trying to build a home, trying to build a building or anything like that is going to be near impossible. Some areas of the nation are worse than others. The demand for supplies will not be able to be met. Part of that being the lack of movement at times going on in the nation. In other words, things just not moving, not working right. The nation's not working right. Things falling apart. Again, again, this will be short term and it will be uh, and it will then be better. In other words, after we get through these, this short term thing and say how short it was, then things get better. That fits the prophecies. I say again, it's not the end, nor is it the big one that the Lord has talked about and spoken about for years and foretold. Worse will follow what we're about to experience. And it will be what I saw in this nation. The worst 
is international, but it's at a distance. I've heard people say that when America sneezes, the rest of the world gets pneumonia. So it's going to be worse for the rest of the world at this point, but it'll also be hard on America too. The mercy of God is in this so that we can trust him. We must always trust him. He is trustworthy. He will prove that he is trustworthy to us. That does not mean we'll have it easy. And let me just say something about that. See, I think I know what the Lord was speaking to me, what, about three weeks ago when I had five dreams in one week, and they were all saying that basically I needed to lighten the load. And we sold some things, we lightened the load, and I feel a peace in my heart. I feel like that Prophecy Club and the Johnson family are ready to move through some financial difficulty. I don't mean we have everything we need, of course, but I think that, I think he warned me. And I can tell you some other warnings, which we won't go into, but I'm, I'm pretty comfortable if something was coming that was bad, it was going to hurt our family or our ministries, I think he'd tell us. And that's exactly what he's done. He's told us. And that's exactly what he's talking about. This does not mean that we'll have it easy. It does not mean that everything will be great, taken care of. That not what I'm saying, that that's not what I'm saying. The Lord is saying we can trust him, right? Since 2008 and 2009, when it was hard, when, when it, the nation was hard hit upon, that wasn't the big one either. He will be trustworthy. I'll say it this way. The fear of the Lord will need to be great in us and become even greater in us. So let me finish up. What you're looking at is more shortages in supply and demand chain will occur due to interstate disruptions. Secondly, federal support will be small. In other words, cut off welfare checks. We want our entitlements, okay, financial difficulties. Dollar dropping 30% is probably going to be part of it. Secondly, federal report be small and sometimes non-existent, including the breakdown temporarily of monthly type checks. Bingo. That's exactly what Shane Warren was told. Thirdly, some states will be forced to provide for what the federal government cannot. Well, that's what Terry Bennett said from back in 2010, that it come down to the state issues because the government couldn't do it. Government ran out of money. Others will be unable to because of their own economic uh, conditions. You will need to have the Lord's wisdom. I would advise strongly that you store up at least a few weeks worth of food. Oh, that's, if you're very, very poor, that's the minimum I would recommend you store up. You need more than that. I've had people say to me, well, Terry, I just trust in God. No, you're trusting in the system we have, and it's not trustworthy. Oh, I like those words. Those are some of the best words way to explain it exactly. I'll read it again. I'd had people say, well, Terry, I'll just trust in God. No, you're not trusting in God. You're really trusting in the system we have, and it's not trustworthy. I don't need to store because I trust God. Well, if you go back 100 years in this nation, that would be foolish talk. There were no super, supermarkets. You see, we built a trust in our system, and I'm telling you, it's going to be shaken. We're not trusting God. We're trusting we can go to the supermarket. We're trusting supermarkets. We're trusting the situation of the system. And I'm uncovering it in front of us. That is showing a lack of trust in the Lord. That is showing a lack of trust in the Lord. And we're going to need to trust in the Lord. Now let me go to another dream that Jason Meeks had uh, back in 23. And I'm going to cover this because this is also a confirmation of what this other guy just said, Terry Bennett just said. Jason Meeks, 7-18-2023. I feel that very shortly you're going to get really busy. Now this is a prophecy specifically to me, Johnson Family, and Prophecy Club, but I think it's also speaking to you. Very shortly, you're going to get very, very busy. I think the very busy is, remember the Lord told me that when those prophecies I gave your wife began to come to pass, people from all directions will begin to turn and listen to your ministry. And when they give the Palestinians a state, that was told Leslie back in 2002. 
And in another way, it was given to her in 2006, another set of prophecies. And we have blasted that every place. So when that comes to pass, he said a lot of people are going to start turning to listen to your ministry. I think that's what he's talking about. Your ministry is going to get really, really busy. Maybe busier than you've ever been and will be traveling for ministry. Prophetic oil, many of the things God has promised you, he's saying, will be coming to pass. And I think that's true too. This will start with an economic downturn. That fits, doesn't it? An economic downturn for not only the Prophecy Club, but for all ministries, as well as just regular people and businesses. In other words, God's warning me it's going to hit me personally. Prophecy Club, our ministry, church, and also you. At least a nationwide, if not a global, economic slowdown. I believe the key to getting through the first part of the downturn will be able to ask people to give to the Prophecy Club monthly for under $10 each. That is why the flyer he saw in the, in the dream had $9.90 on it. Less than $10, an automatic every month gift. To ask people to do this so that the people had provision as the economy is bad and Prophecy Club still has incoming funds. In other words, not much from you, but a little bit from a whole lot of people helps us get through what is about to hit. If 2,000 people gave $10 a month, okay, he figures that all out, okay. As I was rushing around, no sooner than it started, the big money came in. Finances were no longer a problem, an issue for all the Prophecy Club. Time itself would be needed most of those days, but the Lord will give you all that you need to fulfill His promises to you, Jason Meeks. Then he called back. He says, I believe there will come a day when you are so busy doing the Lord's work that you will have to lean on people for help getting everything accomplished because you can't be everywhere at once. People may not have experience in some areas like drilling wells, okay, but are sold out to Jesus will be able to make correct decisions through the Holy Spirit. And I'm reminded of when the Lord told Moses to make the Ark of the Covenant. How would anybody know how to make that? It's because he downloaded the <laughs> to the people. He just showed them how to make it. All of the measurements. I mean, if you read the, the instructions in the Old Testament, there's no way you would make it like that. But God just downloaded to him how to do it. And kind of like he's downloaded me some things regarding oil in Israel, which I'm not going to release yet. Let's go on. There are many people who listen online and do not go to church. You are their pastor. With the house being full of people, People will run to the Prophecy Club once they catch the truth. It will grow. Don't let it divide your attention. The Lord will keep you on task. The man of the dream that had a falling out with you years ago is when people who walked away from you and had fun, made fun, find out everything you said came to pass, they will run back to help you like the prodigal son in Scripture. Well, you know, I mean, we've been doing this 30 years. Obviously, a lot of people got tired of following the Prophecy Club. Here's what I feel is most important in the dream. There are five main people in it. I believe if we will all come together and pray and fast, the Lord will show us what needs to be done to raise donations to TPC to get through the lean time. Now, let me jump down to the point here. Last line. He called back and he said, Pastor, I believe that this is only a temporary time of difficulty. That's exactly what Terry Bennett just said. And that's what I feel in my heart. I feel that it's going to be a short time. I'd like to be able to tell you when it starts. I don't know. Maybe it's already started. I'd like to be able to tell you how long. I, I don't know. I don't know when the money drilled well is in Israel is going to arrive. But I promise I heard the audible voice of God say, Stan, I will give you the money to drill the well in Israel. Unquote. Now, every time I say that, I have to give you a disclaimer. I cannot guarantee we're ever going to get the money drilled for or hit oil in Israel. But I believe it's close. Not close enough. <laughs> because it's going to be a lot of fun to go over to Israel to work and drill. Even though I don't know anything about oil, God... Let me talk about that for a second. I was telling somebody at church yesterday this. So... Well, I'll just tell you what I told them. <clears throat> See, I grew up in Odessa, Texas. 
I lived across the street from a pump jack. Mm, click, click. Mm, click, click. I went to sleep hearing that. A lot of times I'd wake up hearing that. And it was there 20 years before I moved in. It was there probably 30 years after I moved out. That pump jack's still there, still pumping oil. My friends in high school, all of their moms and dads were all in there. Matter of fact, they, they had uh, bumper stickers that said, oil feeds my family and pays my taxes. But I wanted nothing to do with the oil business. I had a very good friend that died. Matter of fact, I had several friends that died in the oil business. I mean, you go out on some of those rigs and sometimes you get killed. It's dangerous. So I never wanted to have anything to do with the oil business. And I had invested in another oil company, Hayseed's company. And I was very frustrated with how it was going. This is when Hayseed was still alive. And I just prayed the Lord one day in my office. I said, Lord, I said, I'm fed up with this oil stuff. It's never going any place. I'm just going to sell my stock just wash my hands of it and walk away. And then I thought, okay, all right, Lord, let me, let me put it to a test. So if you want me to stay involved with this oil and Israel stuff, now, of course, at the time, I had no idea to the degree that I would be president and CEO of an oil company with the vision to go find oil in Israel. I was just, you know, I had a little bit of stock. And I say a little bit, too. So if you want me to stay involved in this oil and, and Israel thing, then I'd like for you to, to show me a dream tonight of what it's like to be at an oil well when it comes in, when the oil comes in. Because I've never even been, you know, at a place where they're pumping oil. I want nothing to do with it. I've never been on an oil platform. I've never, 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 I mean, I've seen video, but I've never been there. I didn't want to be. Sure enough, that night I had a dream. This was the dream. I can still remember it exactly. I dreamed that I was standing in front of the pipe coming out of the ground. They had, you know, the big collar that turns the pipe and everything, and they were moving the pipe and everything. About the time, this voice from right there behind me, I can still tell you exactly where the voice was coming from. It hollered and it says, Thar she blows! You know, like in Mo Moby Dick, like the movie. Thar she blows! And about that time... The whole platform started shaking like this, and then it just kind of slowed down. Then all of a sudden, a psh, I mean, like a really, really high pitch. It was like, oh, hurting your ears. Air started gushing up out of this pipe. And you could see the ear, but you could see it was high pressure. Really, just high, high pitch. Tremendous pressure. And I covered my ears and just went like this. And then I could tell, and then nothing. And then what looked like brown sugar oil came bubbling out and was bubbling up at about four foot, maybe five foot out of this pipe. And so obviously the Lord had answered my question because I'd ask him, you know, am I supposed to stay involved with this oil thing? And so he wanted me, so I kept the stock. <laughs> I stayed involved in it, and of course, you know, the rest of it, I never have whole, told the whole story. One of these days, I'll tell the whole story, but the main thing is God is about to do something really, really big in the earth. Right now, America should be supporting Israel, and she's not. So God is about to send the money to Israel directly through oil, to build up their military, and that's when somehow they're going to pull out some kind of a secret weapon according to the prophecy and get back all of the land according to the Bible. And then Armageddon, the Russians, and all of her buddies come down to attack Israel, and Jesus returns. That's probably going to happen in the lives of most people watching right now. So what I would I recommend? Okay, yes, I'd recommend that you... <laughs> Do subscribe to the channel, join Prophecy Club, $9.90 a month. But I'll also recommend you go to Joseph Kitchen. Go there. You're going to want to have enough food, not just for yourself, but for the, for the neighbor, for your family. For, there's going to be a lot of people coming to your house. They find out you have food. Instead of coming to rob you, you want to have them come in there and, and hold them Bible studies and leading them to the Lord and have the food to feed them. Okay? 
And at $1,000 a person per year, there's nothing else out there. There's no other long-term storage food that I have seen that is as nutrition and, and as easy to prepare and as long keeping. Go to Joseph Kitchen. I mean, I had breakfast. Matter of fact, my breakfast, <laughs> to tell you, was a slice of Joseph Kitchen bread with a little bit of that uh, cream cheese on it. And then lunch was a slice of chicken with a slice of, of uh, cheese, a cup of pickle, pickles on top of a Joseph Kitchen bread. And I found that it, I sleep better at night. Uh, blood pressure's gone down. I'm losing weight, lost about 30 pounds. And it's actually cut down on what we spend. Leslie was gone out of town for three weeks and I lost five pounds because she's not around, so I didn't have to eat all of her wonderful food, so I just mostly ate Joseph Kitchen bread with a few other things on it, lost weight, lost five pounds in three weeks. Not trying to, it's just, and it's good, and I don't get hungry. Feel good, go play racquetball. Go check it out, josephkitchen.com. So what is an EMP Shield device? It's a device you can put on your car and your house that in an EMP attack is supposed to stop the attack. And if you go to empshield.com and if you use the promo code PROPHECY, they give you a $50 discount. They also have videos up there, shows you how to install it on your car and your house and everything, and it's not difficult at all. I've got one of them right here. Red goes to red, black goes to black, green goes to the car, uh, body of your car, and you just peel it off the back, stick it under there, got another device that goes on your house. So, not complicated. Take you about 10 minutes to put them in. So, empshield.com promo code is PROPHECY.